Now that we know how malaria develops and how to recognize the symptoms, how do we treat this disease? Patients diagnosed with malaria are generally categorized as having either uncomplicated or severe malaria. Patients diagnosed with uncomplicated malaria can be effectively treated with oral antimalarials. It is preferable that treatment for malaria not be initiated until the diagnosis has been established by laboratory testing. Presumptive treatment, without the benefit of prior laboratory confirmation, should be reserved for extreme circumstances, such as strong clinical suspicion or severe disease in a setting where prompt laboratory diagnosis is not available. The treatment of uncomplicated malaria generally caused by Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, or Plasmodium nolsey usually involves the drug chloroquine. So how does chloroquine work? Remember earlier in the course when we discussed what the parasite is doing once it invades a red blood cell? The parasite takes in hemoglobin by pinocytosis and breaks it down into amino acids that it can use. Remember the parasite has heme polymerase, which detoxifies heme and hematin to turn it into hemozoan, which it can use. And heme polymerase is the target of a family of drugs known as eight aminoquinolones, the most common of which is chloroquine. These drugs work by blocking the parasite heme polymerase, which makes heme and hematin toxic to the parasite, which leads to its death. With Plasmodium ovale and Plasmodium vivax, a small number of parasites remain dormant inside liver cells. We refer to these as hypnozoites, and they are found in virtually all patients with these two types. Therefore, in these two types, even if you treat and kill the active malaria in the red cells, you may not be able to kill this dormant form. This means the patient could have a relapse of vivax and ovale if you don't also target the dormant hypnozoites in the liver. So you treat uncomplicated Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale malaria with chloroquine to target the active malaria. And then you come back after treatment with primaquine. This agent penetrates into the liver cell and kills the hypnozoites. So you use chloroquine plus primaquine to prevent relapse of these two types of malaria. Now a caution about primaquine. Primaquine can cause massive hemolysis if given to patients who have G6PD deficiency. So if you're treating persons of African descent and a few others, you would test them for the presence of G6PD deficiency before giving them primaquine. Primaquine should also be avoided in pregnant women because it has been shown to cause developmental abnormalities in the babies. In addition, if the fetus is G6PD deficient, Massive hemolysis can occur, which can be fatal. So primaquine is contraindicated in pregnancy. Instead, you would generally treat with chloroquine first, then wait until after delivery and treat the mother and baby with primaquine. So what about falciparum malaria? Milder cases of falciparum malaria may occur in individuals who were previously infected and thus have antibodies to the disease. For uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum infections acquired in areas without chloroquine-resistant strains, which include Central America, west of the Panama Canal, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, patients can also be treated with oral chloroquine. For uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum infections acquired in areas with chloroquine resistance, four treatment options are available. Artemether lumefantrine is the preferred option if readily available. Artemether is related to artesanate, which works by disrupting the mitochondrial membrane and the energy production of the mitochondrion, causing the parasite to die. Lumefantrine's precise mechanism of action is unknown, but available data suggests that it inhibits nucleic acid and protein synthesis. The second option is a combination of atovaquone, which is a structural analog of coenzyme Q, found in the mitochondria 
electron transport system and the sulfa analog proguanil, which inhibits the synthesis of folic acid in the parasite. The third option is quinine sulfate plus doxycycline, tetracycline, or clindamycin. Quinine is one of the eight aminoquinolones which block heme polymerase. Doxycycline, tetracycline, and clindamycin all inhibit protein synthesis in the parasite. Either of the tetracyclines are preferred to clindamycin because there are more efficacy data available. The fourth option is mefloquine. Mefloquine acts as a blood schizonticide. However, its exact mechanism of action is not known. Mefloquine is generally reserved for cases where the other options cannot be used because when used in therapeutic doses, in contrast to preventive doses, rare, severe neuropsychiatric reactions can occur. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.